beginning of the band, I mean, how, how did you guys get started? I mean, I, you know, I've been a fan since, you know, since uh, Dirty Rotten came out, and, uh, you know, how, how did you guys get started, you know, when you got started with Warrant? Um, back, back when Jesus was a baby, Eric and I played in a band <laughs> down in Orange County, California, and, um, that band disbanded for whatever reasons. I mean, we were young kids trying to figure our rock and roll future out. And he moved to LA and um, met up with met a drummer, Max Mazursky, who was in Warrant. Warrant was very young at the time, and, and they needed a guitar player, a second guitar player. So Eric joined that band, which was Warrant, and then they did a gig, I guess, with. Um, with Jerry Dixon's band, who I don't know what the name of his band was at the time, but um, long story short, Jerry joined Warrant and Warrant Virgin, I think 2.0. And then, long story short, uh, the drummer and the and the singer from Warrant Virgin 2.0 left, and at that same time, Janie and Steven um, were their guys in their band left. And so they joined up with, with Jerry and Eric and Warrant at that time. Um, and then about, I don't know, a year, year and a half later, maybe even less time, I don't know, I came along because Janie wanted a different lead guitar player. And Eric and I had known each other from prior, so we ran each other, ran into each other in Hollywood, walking around doing the rock and roll thing back in the day. And, and um, he said, hey man, we're looking for a guitar player. And I said, great. And I was looking for a band. and. The rest is, we shall say, it's history. I mean, that was about 1980, the beginning of 87, so right. not shortly thereafter the band got a record deal, and, and the rest is pretty much public knowledge. So there you go. Yeah, my brother and I were talking about, uh, you know, when Dirty Rotten came out. I could still see the day when I walked into the music store, which was, uh, I think it was National Record Mart here in Pittsburgh. And, okay. you know, we had the big you know, display when you walked in and you, you kind of turned to the left and right there was the, you know, the brand new album. And I still remember to this day picking it up and I've been a fan ever since. Well, that's very cool, man. I guess, I, I guess record, it's back from a day when, when, you know, seeing a record cover would get your attention and make you buy a record even if you hadn't heard it, you know. I mean, I, right. I grew up in those, those times too, so that's a special time that is sadly lost, lost on today's generation, you know. It really is. But, uh, yeah, it is what it is, though, you know? Life right. moves on. Right. And even in the beginning, you know, when you guys did, you know, Dirty Rotten and, and get started out, like, what what was it like when you went in to uh, record that album as far as, you know, who were you looking at for songwriting, you know, structure, and how did that come about? Because there was a lot of fun songs on that album. Yeah, Janie, Janie was the main songwriter at that time. I mean, he held it pretty close to the cuff meaning that, that even if somebody else had an idea, it was, you know, it was kind of like, hey, this is my idea, and I'm the singer, and, you know, it, it happens in bands, but he was also the strongest songwriter at the time, I mean, not to discount what he, what he brought to the band, I mean, it was, uh, it was great, you know, right. and it just pours out, you know, song ideas come in, the band sits down, goes through, works out an arrangement, you know, um, then you go into the studio and the pre-production, work out more of an arrangement with with the producer. Producers have a lot, had a lot of say back in the day, right. um, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on what producers you worked with. And, and and you go in and you record it to the best of your ability. It's it's amazing how different it is nowadays. You know, I, you know, from us talking to a lot of the guys, you know, how the the producers, um, you know, his his role is is so different now than it used to be back then. Well, it's, it comes with the yeah, it comes with the advent of all the home home recording gear, and and some guys, you know, are really good at that. Some guys can go in and they've got a good ear, and they know, you know, they can they can figure it out. But some guys that think they're good aren't so good, and, and you hear less than stellar recordings, um, you know, from people that think they're producers. There's there's still, in my eyes, producers, good ones. You know, um, which is they're a dying breed. Um, they're irreplaceable because they're kind of like 
You're kind of like the voice of reason in the studio, you know? Like, hey, man, there's a tuning bummer. When you wouldn't even, you know, with your own ear, even me, with, with how long I've been playing, sometimes I don't catch tuning bummers, you know? Right, right. And, but it's there, and, and having a guy, because you're in a different mode when you're recording, and having a guy there that really knows what he's doing at the end of the day helps, you know? Um, so, I mean, Jeff Pilson, who who produced this this record, right. was instrumental in, in tones, instrumental in, in a lot of things that happened. I mean, his tenure as a musician's rich and, and, and long, and, and, you know, I mean, wow, well, he's in one of the most chart-topping bands of all time, Foreigner now, you know, he's right. been in Doc, and he's been in all kinds of things. So, so having that guy there for a band like us is... Um, is important, you know. It's, uh, keeps you in check, pushes you when you need to be pushed. Right. Um, you know, plays match. You know, uh, a referee when guys get in arguments in the studio. I mean, right. there's a lot of different <laughs> reasons. <laughs> but, you know, the producer unfortunately isn't just the producer. Sometimes he's the babysitter as well, and it happens. You know, I mean, there's a lot of emotional stuff that goes into making a record and, and uh, Jeff did a great job I love Jeff a lot for what he did and, and just really appreciate him as a musician he really did a great job on that album and, and, and all you guys you know totally I mean that that new album is uh, it, it encompasses it seems like it, it encompasses everything that the band's about you know from the early years of, up until now and, and I think Robert is fantastic on vocals he really is yeah, he's been in the band, I think, nine years now, close right. to nine years. Ten, I don't even know anymore. Right. <laughs> it's been so long. I mean, I've done just, I did, I've done just as many records without, you know, Janie that I did with Janie. Um, Eric and Jerry are the only two that have, you know, played played in different records that I did with Janie. Um, and no disrespect to him, I mean, he wrote some great stuff, and he was just a, a monster of a front man back in the day. Right. You know, but we've been with Robert for quite some time now, and, and um, you know, got four original members, the backbone of the band, and, and we just do what we do, and we have fun, you know, no disrespect to the past, you know, we hope to pay homage to it every night when we're out on the road playing live, and we play, you know, a majority of those songs that were, that were hits back in the day, because we do appreciate it, you know, not a lot of people are like, ah, oh, you're just doing it for this, you're doing it for the money, you're, it, it's... If I was doing this for the money, I would have been looking for a different job a long time ago. Making music, making money in the music business isn't an easy thing to do, you know? Right, right. Um, we do it because we love it and we have a passion for it. And and um, the way we look at it is we're keeping it alive, you know? We're not uh, we're not doing anything disrespectful. So, um, you know, and we enjoy it. I mean, it comes from the heart. Yeah, I totally agree. And it, it, it comes across to the, you know, like I said, to the fans on the on the new album and, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys live too you guys are coming to Pittsburgh in October uh, what cool. city are we in are we in Pittsburgh yeah I, I'm in Pittsburgh right now yes you guys are you guys are at Jurgles which is in Warrendale which is just outside of Pittsburgh okay good I love Pittsburgh yeah we're looking forward it's to it my second, second favorite football team of all time <laughs> <laughs> there's your first Joey Man, if I told you you'd laugh. I'm a Dolphins fan from back in the day, and it's like... No, man. I, it is what it is, brother. You know, it's funny. It's uh, It just is what it is. Dolphin, dolphin fever from, from when I was, I think, eight years old. So You know what's but cool? I loved, you know, I was a 70s football fan, so I loved, I loved Pittsburgh in the 70s. And I've met, I actually met Ed Tuttle Jones at one point. So, yeah, Pittsburgh's... Uh, have fond memories of playing back in the day and, and looking forward to getting getting near it again that's cool what you said uh you know about being a dolphins fan too because i always liked the the dolphins in the 70s as well with the steelers i mean i had a chance to meet don shola like three years ago oh wow which was a total honor super nice guy really really that's cool that's yep. good to know i i i uh i got to meet marino back in the day and and um, That's cool. I wanted to meet Don Shula because he was still coaching him at the time. And the guy, the guy that worked for the Dolphins at the time, goes, "Gee, his head won't even fit in this doorway." And that's, so perspectives, everything, right? Yeah, you, I guess um, you just catch him on certain days, and you never know. Oh, who knows, man? Everybody gets grumpy now and then, you know. So. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Everybody's human, man. Exactly. Exactly. 
Hey, on this uh, new album, Joey, when you guys went in, uh, you know, how about as far as you know songwriting on this one? I mean, because it's really, uh, it's really tight. I, I always, uh, you know, I look at like uh, Devil Dancer is the one that that really stood out to me. I mean, that is a great song. You know, you're gonna laugh about this and that. <laughs> that song was written. We did um, our one and only cruise we've ever done, and probably will ever do because. We're not good at being captive for three or four days on a ship. <laughs> um, we took we took a studio uh, recording, you know, like a home, you know, laptop and all that, talking about the home recording, just to demo and write and do something while we weren't doing anything. Because being on a cruise and being on one of those gigs, you know, you might play two nights out of the four you're on there, and then the rest of the time you got nothing, you know. But walking around right. the ship, you know, with your, with your dick in your hand but anyway yeah, um, <laughs> we could say dick right oh yeah oh yeah so um so jerry you know we i was working with working on demos in my room jerry had his thing we were in the same you know like right next to each other and he goes come over and check this out and he had that riff you know god on god on god on god on you know yep and i'm all that's killer so i um he had just a drum, you know, track on it, and I, I laid down the the guitar, and and we got a bunch of percussion items out in the room, like we had some chopsticks. I think we had like a tin, the ice bucket. We had um, a Pellegrino bottle, nice. and that was the that was the rhythm track to the demo. So the de the demo's percussion is actually better than the percussion on the record because it was just spontaneous and right. like that, you know, really bitching and kind of. Um, rural and I don't know what else, what other way to describe it. You know, just authentic. And um, cool. and that song morphed into to Devil Dancer. It, Robert, I think, took it and wrote some lyrics. I do believe he wrote the lyrics to that song. So the way that it works in our band is that everybody, for the most point or part, tries to write. Um, it could be like for myself, I'll write a I'll write a guitar riff. I'll go down to a buddy's house. Um, and, and I'll lay down the guitar riff, I'll lay down a bass riff, he's playing drums obviously, and then that's it. I'm not a, I'm not a lyricist, I'm not a, I don't write words, I'm not good at that, I, probably because I don't read enough fiction, you know? Um, yeah. But you put those all into a big hat at the end of the day, and what gets worked on gets worked on, and what doesn't doesn't, and the guys that, that take more time at crafting the music, you know, their music gets gets on the record because it's complete, and, and that's the way it should be, really. I mean, if right. if I was a pussy, I'd say, well, my record, my songs didn't get on the record, but <laughs> at the end of the day, right. that's not what it's about, you know what I mean? And it's it's real. I mean, the band, it's not easy being in a band with four or five guys because everybody wants their shit out there, and everybody wants their songs and their, you know, but at the end of the day, the guys who really take the time deserve, you know, deserve the cake. You know, at the end of the day, especially if it's good, and if it sucked, then you got a then you got an argument. You say, hey, that that song's not so great. But um, Eric uh, Eric put I think one riff out, which was um, only Broken Heart, uh, and then for the most part, everything else was Jerry and and Robert. Jerry's really stepped up in the last you know seven eight years as a songwriter, and he works hard at it, man. So God bless him. You know. And it does, it so comes off. Much, that's pretty much how it works. That's cool that you guys, you guys always seem like you uh, like you got along like that. I mean, you know, performance, I remember seeing you in 91 on the Cherry Pie Tour. And uh, it, what was cool all, always was, was the amount of, uh, you know, uh, how serious you guys were, but how much fun you had and, and how much effort you put into the live performance. And it's, that's always been like a warrant staple to me. You know, you got a brother, right? I do. Do you always love him? I do. Okay, so you always love him. Do you fight? We do. Okay. So fighting with somebody and not getting along with somebody doesn't mean you don't love him. And, exactly. and it, it's just, especially when you get two dudes and you get two alpha males in the same room and you're like beating your chest and you're going, but, you know, I, that's my girlfriend. No, it's my girlfriend or whatever it is you fight over. That's when you're young. That's my toy. No, that's my toy. It's right. what it all boils down to for this band is we're, we're, we're a band of brothers. You know, at the end of the day, 
we genuinely care about one another, you know, and 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 that's what you see, you know, and you probably connect with it because you've got that same vibe going on because you've got a brother. Or right. even if you have a sister, it's the same thing, you know what I mean? So right. that's the real deal. It was real with Janie when he was with us and, and part of this band and um, for anybody to think any different is just it's just silly. Um, right. You know, but but from where it's been for the last nine years with Robert, um, for the most part, the band gets along great outside of a few, you know, silly little issues here and there, just just like any other relationship, you know. Right. Right. Yeah, it's just uh, that's the way it is, and the ones that you know that can handle it, and, and you know, little things and. It just makes you, you know, last longer and persevere. Yeah, you got to keep it in perspective, right? Right, right. Absolutely. As as you, the way I look at it is, as long as I wake up breathing every morning, it's not going to suck. You know. Right. Exactly. So exactly. I keep that in perspective, and <laughs> you know, it's like that's it. Just enjoy life, man. It's it's getting it's getting later in the years. I don't want to I don't want to get uptight about shit that just doesn't matter. You know. Well, you said exactly. Yeah, I've been thinking about that too. You know, you just got to start appreciating the more you, the older you get, the more you appreciate it. I th- I think it's like I said, perspective. You're like, okay, yep. oh, that doesn't mean a thing. You know, that right. doesn't ma- matter. You know, it's like it's like people always ask that question. You know, what do you think about all the haters online and all these? And it's like, wow, if I had enough time to read that stuff. To be concerned <laughs> right. with it, you know. I I probably want to kill myself because people are just brutal and can hide behind a keyboard and you know the little things that I do see here and there. You know, it's like wow, really? Whoa! You know, where'd that come from? Right. And at the same time, you know, you respect people's opinions to a certain point, especially if it's if it's um, objective, you know, or right. smart. Right. Um. But, you know, for the most part, I just try to keep it positive, be around positive people that have something to, to add in life, you know? Right. And, uh, like you said, the older we get, the perspective changes a little bit, you know? Exactly. And and, and everything that I've heard, you know, about this new album is, 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 um, is positive. I mean, it, it seems like you guys are doing well with it. You know, the, the, the fans and the people that I've talked to love it. And I think that's great. I'm happy for you guys. Well, thank you, man. I've, I've, we we try not to read a lot of our own reviews just because it's kind of voodoo. We just do what we do. Right. And and that's it. If we do what we do. If somebody likes it, great. If somebody hates it, great. Just as well. It doesn't it doesn't really affect us at the end of the day. We do what we do. If we if we sit there and live from our reviews that we would have broken up a long time ago, you know? Right, um, right. The ones that do get passed to us from friends that we do reviews with or whatever, you know, and you read them, you go, wow, okay, there was like one that came, I got a text last night late from one of the other guys in the band from a radio station review, and this radio station famous, I won't name the name, but they've never really been supportive of this band, ever. Right. And the review was like a five out of five. Nice. And it's it's yeah, it was it's cool, but at the same time it's like wow, okay, all right, well they got this one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and you just kind of look at it and go, wow, what a trip. All right, you know, you take it for what it's worth. I mean, it's not we're not you know saving the world here. It's not rocket science. We're just having a good time being who we are. Right. Like I said, you know, uh, make no excuses and just have a good time and and, and soldier on. Well, you said it perfectly, man. How how have you got? How has the uh, audience been with the live? You know, live now with the new new material. You know, uh, it depends on where you're at. And, and uh, we just played some gigs a few weeks ago on the East Coast, which we haven't been there for so long. Like up in Hampton Beach, um, we played the ballroom up there, which is just a killer gig, and the people went nuts. I mean, louder, harder, faster. We play live. We just introduced New Rebellion into the set. Um, nice. So there's a lot, you know, There's I think we play three three new show, songs live. Um, and they've been going over, great, like East Coast, great. Portland, Maine, great. You know, then you get down to M3 and everybody's beat up all day and you go on at 6 at night and everybody's been there since, you know, 11 in the day and they're fried. And, right. And you get... 
you know, not the same response, <laughs> you know. Um, and then we come out to California and we play where, believe it or not, we probably drew more people in California back in our back in the club days than we do now. Um, California is very fickle. I see everything all day long. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, I mean, you know, they could have a Zeppelin reunion one day and Beatles reunion the next day if that were ever to happen. And, right. And uh, you know, and, and it, 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 it's just always it's information overkill out here in California. So we played last weekend and Pasadena and Agora and we had great crowd response on the new song so you know I'd say 9 out of 10 live shows on the new tunes we're getting great response some people have, if they haven't heard it they just kind of look like me when I go see a band right. you know we played Cheap Trick a few months ago or a month and a half ago whatever I have, when I heard the tunes I grew up on that, that, that are like B-sides you know like Stop This Game and stuff like that I'll, I'll, I'll sit up right. I was stoked I'm like, yes. And then when they played something new, I was like, well, what the fuck is this? Because <laughs> I, have, I haven't heard it. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. So, so my perspective is true. I mean, I understand it. If people haven't heard the record and they're just going, what? You're trying to digest, you know, for the first time. And, and uh, it's totally understandable. But for the most part, it's been really good. You know, and we're digging it. It's fun for us to play new music live. You know what I mean? Right, right. Definitely. It's great to... Like, Kind of like getting a new girlfriend or, or you know, new wife or something. It's always good in the beginning. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you go out there, you're on fire, then, huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. I love you, baby. You're my soulmate. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, everything's Anyways. everything's like that in the beginning. You're right, man. Yeah. How's that? How's that? You know how. In the beginning, with uh, with Robert getting into the band, how did you guys how did you guys go about choosing him? I mean, he was, I thought he was fantastic in Lynch Mob, you know, when he came in, and and then I saw that he got on with you guys. I was like, boy, that's a that's a great choice. You know, he he uh, when I got back in the band in two thousand and four, Jerry and Eric already had their sights on Jamie St. James because they were big black and blue fans. You know what I mean? They were just right. and and. It really was just a jam, and I was there the first time. It was everybody, no Steven, it was Mike Fasano and Grums and Jamie, and, and it was just like, okay, let's go do a gig. And it was like, oh, okay. And so we went and did a gig, and, and, and that flowed through. And then, you know, when Janie came back around and said, hey, I'm, I got my act together, let's do this again, we said, great. We all had set downs and put everything, you know, all the ill feelings and that brotherhood you know that we had that we had experienced with each other you know and it's a two-way street you know to rest and, and we move forward positively he he had a struggle man I, I you know it's horrible you know what went down with him and the way it happened right as far as his life at the end and, and um you know nobody was pouring booze down his throat we were all trying to do the, the, the exact opposite trying to help him out you know right um and when that was going south during the reunion tour I bumped into Robert, who was an old friend. You know, Lynch Mob had toured with us in like '93 on the Dog Eat Dog tour. And um, yes. the crazy thing is that he had never crossed our radar before. When you know, when we did the Saint thing and all that, which is just insane because he's probably the most professional singer I've ever played with, I mean, that we've ever played with. And we put him in the back pocket, kind of as you know, hey, would you be willing to you know? check this out are you into it and he's like yeah so about a month later it just kind of fell into place we did a impromptu jams even while Janie was still in the band just saying let's see see what it sounds like you know right. and um, then unfortunately the thing you know the whole thing with Janie didn't work out and Robert stepped in you know and um, he's done a great job you know he, he does his best um, to keep the legacy tunes, you know, as close to original as possible. And you, you know, those songs aren't easy to sing. If anybody's uh, a, a talented singer out there that knows, I mean, Janie had pipes, you know, and those aren't those aren't easy songs to sing. Right. Um, but he does a great job, and he respects, you know, the legacy that that Lane, you know, left us with those songs and every night that we go out you know it's done with passion and it's done with um you know professionalism for sure so we got lucky man i think the third time was a charm 
maybe uh maybe the rock gods that be just said okay these guys have been beat up enough let's, let's give them a good one you know that's going to stick around and right right you know take it seriously he really does i i see i see uh you know his posts on facebook and stuff obviously and it, it, it just seems like he's he's really happy with uh with where he's at and and what you guys are doing right now because it's it always has been you know Joey personally I mean me saying has, has been a great band I mean you guys have been enjoyable you know since day one you know it's the music is great and and you you put a positive spin with the way you deliver the music and and, and I think a lot of people see that and that's that's something that's needed a lot in in music nowadays as well we we have fun I mean we, we like I said before we we do what we do no excuses you know um and we do have fun. I mean, it's fun. At the end of the day, you know, what's the point? If you're not having fun, why do it? You know, and um, exactly. we care about what we do. We care about the legacy. You know, obviously, we want to move forward and make new music because we just, it, he got it. Was a, is a, is a musician and, a, and an artist. Um, but we, we, we still enjoy it. So we'll be here as long as, you know, as, as we enjoy it. And, and so far, you know, it's not getting old old to anybody you know the band I, I could speak with everybody a few days ago at a gig and you know we all still can be in the same room there's no separate dressing rooms yet none of that crap going on you know <laughs> that's good um, and, and we don't take it for granted I mean look there's people out there it's it's you know life isn't easy there's there's things you have to do in life you know that take precedence over going to a rock concert so when people come out to see this band live we want to give 110% plus you know, because it's important for us to not let anybody down. You know, we don't want to let, like, for instance, a monitor issue or, a, or a, you know, something that's that's hard for us on stage that makes our our gig harder flow through to the audience because it's really not their their problem. You know, you got to be a professional and roll through stuff like that. So right. we try to keep it as professional and pro as possible. You know, I mean, what's the point? otherwise you know what I mean right I got you um, give it to the, give it people deserve their money's worth and hopefully and I'm pretty sure from my perspective nowadays that we're giving people their money's worth live we've really stepped it up a lot live um, I don't know why it's just kind of maybe a natural progression maybe it's you have part to do with some of the gear we're using now that's it's, it's more stable and We've got a crew out on the road now with our own gear out on the road instead of you know using backline gear at gigs which a lot of fly bands do and right. it's made a big difference you know i'm really looking so. forward to seeing you guys that's for sure i haven't had a chance to see you with robert yet so that's i'm really looking forward to hearing you know the new tunes and the and seeing you guys live again it's been a while for me unfortunately well that's all right well here we come though you know right right, so right. we're gonna have a good time when you come out we're gonna have to, you're gonna have to get in touch with me and say hey man this is a gig call me like a week before and i'll put you on the list and make sure i save you a beer or two um, oh, that'd be awesome and uh yeah we'll have a good time bring your brother we'll beat him up for the scheduling conflict <laughs> um, no, <I'm> yeah. <laughs> i'll get him i'll get him for you <laughs> <laughs> no, i'm just joking um you know, yeah, come on out, enjoy it, man. I mean, just because it's been a while doesn't mean we're, you know, you're not going to have a good time. And, and Robert does a great job, man. He's, uh, trust me, I, I, I've been in this band with three singers, and he, he does a great job. He's a good guy. Uh, he cares, which is, which is great, which is what this band ultimately needs. For the last eight years, nine years, we've been operating with no drama in this band. Or very little drama, and it's it's a welcome change to uh, to the past when there's certain people you know that did or didn't want to be around around the band, you know. Right. Um, right. So it's really really nice to have that solid rock band, and it translates live. So that there has you to, go. That has to help you as a ton as a musician too. Yeah, not yeah, have to worry okay. about if somebody's going to show up or how they're going to show up. Um, right, right. Yeah, it, it lets you just concentrate on what's important, which is giving the best live performance you can at the, at the given time, you know? Right, right. And the, the only thing you're worried about is, is yourself. You know, I'm not worried about Jerry or Eric or Robert or Steven. 
you know, not having it together. I'm not worried about our crew not having it together. My front of house engineer, everybody's a pro. We put on a pro show. And, um, you know, it's not like we just play five songs a night. You know, the, the, the old hits. We play you know, 16, 17, 18 songs sometimes. Nice. Um, you know, as much as we can, given our time slot. Right. You know, no, no gratuitous solos. Waste of time. Noodle, or what we call noodles. Right, right. And nobody gets out there noodles. It's just a waste <laughs> of time to us. So. Right. Get out there and play, man. That's it. You got it. So that's what we'll bring uh, bring to you when we see you. And and uh, how about uh, how about any last words that you want to get out to the audience? Just you know, <clears throat> to the audience and to you and your brother. You know, thank you for the continued support through thick and thin. You know, we are still here. We're having a great time. Uh, we we love the new record. We worked hard on it. I'm really proud of all the guys in this band and Jeff Pilson and Pat Reagan, who did a stellar job mixing. Right. Um, it was a lot of fun, uh, and we're and we're bringing it and we're bringing it live. So you know, you can find everything you want on uh, WarrantRocks.com, I do believe. We're on Facebook, uh, Eric and Robert are on a Twitter account. I've got a Twitter account I haven't touched because <laughs> I'm just too busy, man. I, I know, you know man. I would, love, I would love to have the time just to do. I could say some funny shit on there, but right. it's like I just I'm so busy with with just with life um, right. that I don't get a chance. But yeah, that's it, man. Thanks for the support. Louder, harder, faster came out May 12. Frontiers Records. You can get it uh, online. It's all the online outlets. You can get it in some retail shops as well and uh looking forward to seeing everybody on tour man absolutely man thanks joey i'm gonna i'm gonna uh i'll get this uh, you know recording done put a nice presentation together and, and we'll send it to you to give the thumbs up and we'll get it out to everybody yeah i'm good dude i you know just do do your thing i don't need to approve it just you okay. know i trust you guys have fun with it and you got it you know you got my cell number so why don't you hit me i don't even see that show on my schedule it doesn't mean it's not booked i see one in gettysburg actually in july okay we're playing gettysburg bike fest but i think isn't that like i don't know you're in pittsburgh so that's eastern pennsylvania i think gettysburg isn't it yeah gettysburg is there? gettysburg's probably like three hours from us i would say something like that yeah we're playing the Gettysburg Bike Fest in July, I think July 8th or something like that. But, yeah, I haven't seen Let me look in my schedule here because I don't see it on that. It doesn't mean it's not there. So what did you? when did you say it was going to be? I believe it was October 13th that I saw. I know it was in October. I know we're playing Jim Thorpe on the 14th. Let me see. 13th. Warrendale. There you go. All right. Cool. Yep. Cool. Good. It says Friday, October thirteenth, Warrendale, Jer Jergles River. It's a is it a bar? Yeah, it's a uh, it's pretty cool because it's a bar on one side, and then it's kind of like a it's like a theater, but it has a like a mezzanine above, so the crowd you know could be right above you guys and mm -hmm. all on the floor too. So it's it's a nice place. Yeah, there you go, Friday, October thirteenth. It's just not on my main schedule. I looks like the offer came in, in the beginning of May, so that's probably my my uh i only get my show list updated every two or three weeks right so there we go you guys will rock that place believe me so everybody that's Good. listening get out to jurgles and see these guys man warrant joey allen awesome Let's band awesome people man rock and roll all right joey thanks for your time my man i appreciate it i'll talk call me a week before that gig we'll put you on the guest list and have some fun you got it that's awesome thanks joey all right thank you i'll see you bye-bye